everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here. Today's video is gonna be all about tandem breastfeeding. How I tandem nurse, why I tandem nurse, how I kept my milk supply throughout my entire pregnancy, and now how I breastfeed a two and a half year old and a seven month old. All that that entails, and also about the benefits for mom and baby. So let's jump right in. So just to start talking about why I started tan nursing. I had been on Instagram and I saw a mom that I follow breastfeeding both of her kids. Like she had had successful breastfeeding journey with the older daughter and then she had a son and she was able to nurse both of them. And I just thought that was so cool. I'd never seen that before. I'd never even heard about it before. Trust me when I say I never thought I would be this mom because I didn't. If you had told me that I would be tandem breastfeeding, I would never have believed you. So yeah, but funny enough, so I saw that online and then I emailed our pediatrician and was like, so I need some lactation support and like, these are my goals. How can I achieve them? And she suggested just setting up a in office visit with her and she is a lactation specialist in IBCLC. Basically we met and she was like, I think this is a great goal. This is how you do it. And she really walked me through just like what it looks like and how to achieve it. And also I wanted to pump less. I was definitely having to pump a lot because when I had Reagan, um, I was pretty much full-time pumping for the first two months of her life, I would say. I actually was told I would never breastfeed her um, because of her prematurity. And so it was really, really cool when I was able to breastfeed her. And that was actually one of the only things that I think went well for me or came naturally to me somehow. So I kind of just took that and ran with it. So that was another reason why I wanted to do it. It was kind of a challenge for myself personally, but also a win that I wanted to have because of such a unique and difficult first time experience having a baby. So let's talk about the how. It sounds difficult. It's really not. People think it's crazy that I do it, but I actually think that it's somewhat easier because I always have a child that I can feed versus pump. But I'll walk you through like exactly what my day looks like around this. Probably should have prefaced that if you breastfed or didn't breastfeed, like that's okay. The point of this video is just for educational purposes, for people who are curious about tandem nursing like I was, or just wanna learn more about it, but have no interest in doing it themselves, whatever. This video is for you. This is not to put any guilt or shame on anyone who decided not to breastfeed or couldn't breastfeed or whatever your situation was. I do think lactation is such a great resource, so definitely check with your lactation consultants um, or with your child's pediatrician, they probably can direct you. This is just my experience and maybe it can be helpful to you. Anyways, how I do it. So the rule of thumb that I used and had to definitely fall back on a lot, especially when I got pregnant was um, never offer and never refuse. So what that means is I'm never pushing breastfeeding on either of my kids. I offer it when they show interest. So. With Reagan, I knew I wanted to tandem nurse, but I also knew that we were around the year mark when I decided that. Um, and I wasn't gonna force her to breastfeed. She seemed to be interested, so I was gonna just take that and run with it. Now, when I did get pregnant, your milk does change, so it tasted different. And I was starting to like really push for her to feed and she, wasn't really liking it and it turned into a battle. And that's when I started asking the lactation consultant, you know, what do I do? And that's when she told me this. So I'm glad that I found out that pretty early because once I just let it go and didn't force it, she pretty much stopped breastfeeding altogether at, I think it was about 15 months. So I got a good 15 months with her, but now what? I was pregnant and I wanted to keep my supply up and I wanted to be able to breastfeed her. I thought I was gonna be breastfeeding her my whole pregnancy. That's when I also referred back to my lactation consultant and she just suggested that I haka and have like 10 minutes of stimulation once or twice a day and that will keep up my supply. That's all I did. So in the mornings I would just throw a haka on 
and then at night before bed I would too. So now that didn't like yield any like milk that I was storing really. I half the time I didn't get anything out. But that's the misconception with breastfeeding and like low supply is that if nothing comes out, you don't have a supply and you cannot feed your child. And that's not the case. So this is all things that I just learned, but if Reagan had wanted to feed, she could have, and she would have gotten milk. Um, it may not have been like eight ounces worth, but it would have been something. And at that age, she doesn't need the calories. So it's more just for comfort and interest versus nutritional benefit. That's something that is a common misconception and actually really important to know. So if you do want to do something like Tana Nurse, don't give up if your child is not nursing while you're pregnant, it can still be possible and you can still keep your supply. So that definitely um, leads me into one of the benefits, which is that you do keep your supply so that when you do have your second child, you don't have to wait that four to five day period that feels like forever for your milk to come in. I will say that when I had Sawyer, my milk wasn't like thriving and at its highest, but I did have more than just the colostrum that typically is what happens right after birth. So that was really cool. Having the milk supply right when he was born took the pressure off. And sometimes stress alone can cause the stunt of your milk supply. So it's just like sometimes a bad situation, but if you can just relax and trust your body and know it will happen, honestly, I think that's the best way to go and to maintain a healthy supply. But going back to how I do it now with two children, what that looks like, the infant child is always first priority. I rarely even feed my kids at the same time. I know it's called tandem. That doesn't always necessarily mean that they're nursing at the same time. I feed one after the other, usually. Every time Sawyer wakes, he's fed. Reagan gets all the extra and she just benefits from the nutritional value that Sawyer just got. Just like with babies who are eating solids, they don't need the breast milk anymore. It's more just for comfort and their preference. Also, let's say that I'm sick and Sawyer is not. When I feed him, he is getting some immune, like immunity from me or what's the word I'm thinking? Antibodies. That's another benefit for the baby and for the mom, but mostly the baby. When, if I'm sick and my kid is not, my body is gonna be giving antibodies through my breast milk to my child. So. Whatever Sawyer's getting, Reagan's getting too. My breast milk's tailored to Sawyer, but like I said, Reagan just reaps any benefits. So there's no harm in it. Um, only benefits on that side. Um, if you're looking at it from like an immune system and health standpoint, it's great. And I can say from experience that breastfeeding has actually kept me from getting sick too because um, somehow there's this communication between mom and baby and there's antibodies and it's just really cool how our bodies can heal our babies and our babies can almost heal our bodies too. And all of that's done through breastfeeding and that's just one of the benefits that I love about it. Again, I'm feeding Sawyer and then I'm feeding Reagan. Now I feed her before bedtime and it's become part of our bedtime routine and that's because she wanted that. I know that I mentioned like never offer, never refuse, but that is one uh, time where she's expecting it and so we do talk about how we're gonna do boobs before bed and that's what it is so um, she knows that she expects that and she looks forward to that she does ask for it a lot during the day and I have had to kind of create boundaries around it because I could be just stopping anything and everything I'm doing probably like 15 times a day if I did feed her as often as she asks so I'd say that's just what works best for you, but on the whole, if I do want to keep her interest, I try not to refuse, but it's not always going to work that way. Um, but most of the time, I try. Um, she kind of knows what to expect now because we've set up those times, like before bed and sometimes in the mornings, especially on the weekends. Uh, Sam will bring me Sawyer in bed and I'll feed him and then I'll feed her pretty much back to back. So that's just like a fun ritual that we've set up with the kids. Okay, so moving into benefits. So talked about um, 
how you keep your supply through pregnancy. So that's huge because a huge piece of a newborn is getting them to latch and that cluster feeding that you're doing in the hospital. And so it was really nice for me to have my supply for the most part. So that was a huge perk and I'm looking forward to that with the next child um, because I hope to keep nursing and I may end up feeding three kids at the same time, who knows. Reagan still seems super interested, so it's not like I'm shutting that down anytime soon. I did learn through the lactation specialist that the natural weaning age is actually three to eight years old. That shocked me. So not only is it natural, but it helps create this super strong bond and attachment between you and your kid. I have found it can create a bond between your kids as well. So. It also helps curb some jealousy that I saw when I brought home Sawyer because Reagan was like, I'm still getting that one-on-one -on -one time with mom. And she has allowed for the, um, you know, both of them to feed at the same time. And that's been super fun to see and just honestly really make, makes it all worth it. So it's those few times that I can do that. It just makes me super happy. I think that there's a lot of like endorphins that come from it and it's super like, mood shifting for me um it's very it's like a happy place for me and a calm place and i can definitely like rest my nervous system and like get some nice breathing in and like it's more relaxing than anything so like i said for me breastfeeding came really naturally so if it did not for you do not feel shame or guilt from that this is something that i literally didn't try and it just worked out this way and so I was going to definitely try to capitalize on what worked for me and made me happy. So, and I can say my breastfeeding journey has definitely been a high, highlight of becoming a mom. So that's been really awesome for me. Not having a pump. Pumping sucks. I don't like it. And it definitely gave me a false narrative for what my, my milk supply was. So when I was feeding Reagan at one point in... I'd say around probably like nine, 10 months, I felt like my milk supply dropped. Um, that's because I was pumping around the clock still. And at night, eh, I would maybe get like an ounce or two and that was super discouraging. So finally talked to the lactation specialist when I said, hey, I wanna do tandem nursing, this is a goal of mine, but I also don't wanna pump, is this even possible? She said, yes, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued because this seems impossible to me. Um, we did talk about supplements and I did end up supplementing so that I could increase my milk supply. Um, but I think pumping honestly just stressed me out more than anything and made me feel like my supply wasn't enough. When in fact, your child is the one telling your body how much they need and your body just follows that. So, um, I had to trust my body. And once I started doing that, I think it definitely just corrected itself. Um, and like I mentioned, Reagan stopped overnight, just stopped. So I definitely kept up my stimulation during the day and at night to compensate for that lack of feeding. So I was able to keep my milk supply up during pregnancy. Now that I've had Sawyer, I pump once a day. Now that he's sleeping through the night, really just pump right before bed. So that's like maybe nine, between nine and 10 at night. And then I go all night and I don't pump at all in the morning. If I feel super full or engorged, I'll throw a haka on, but I've only done that a handful of times. And so now I just wait until 7 a.m. when I feed Sawyer first. So that's quite a long time to go without pumping and I do fine with it. So love that and another huge benefit to mom for tandem nursing and anyone else who just doesn't like pumping. I think it's a, a great alternative. So some questions that I get sometimes about tandem nursing is, do I see myself stopping anytime soon? And the answer is no. This second pregnancy and now that I have two, it was definitely like confirmation that my body knows what to do and my baby's gonna get enough and I don't really need to worry about supply, I don't really need to worry about like when I'm feeding and pumping and all of those things that seemed like such a big deal with the first kid. So 
No, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon and I'm actually really enjoying trusting the process and letting my body lead the way. So hope to, to continue through the next pregnancy whenever that is. Another question is how do you have like the time to do it? And I know it seems like this could be such a commitment, but I honestly find that it's so much easier because I'm not having a schedule pumping into my schedule at all. Another question I get a lot is how do you make time for it? Like all you do all day is just feeding your kid one after another. And I'm like, no, not really. And honestly, I know it sounds like a big commitment, but I honestly think it's easier just because I'm not having a pump. So it gives me more time back. And then bedtime is super easy because I can feed Reagan and so, uh, Sam feed Sawyer a bottle. So both kids are being fed at the same time. And then I can go on with my night. Whereas when Reagan was a baby, I would have her get bottle fed for her last feed of the night just because I wanted her to be able to take a bottle and I wanted a break. And Sam was able to be with her and have bedtime since he's been working all day. So I've kept that the same with Sawyer and now I'm getting that one-on-one -on -one time with Reagan. So it just makes like a special bedtime routine for us. And she knows it's just mom and Ray. So that's really fun. Um, but like I said, other than the one time I pump before bed, it's not time consuming. It's, it actually forces me to sit down and like take a break. Breastfeeding is like a break for me. I do it a lot in bed, like on the weekends, I feed both of the kids in bed. And sometimes I go back to bed after that. Like. I've done what I need to do, they're fed, and they're happy, and now I can go back to sleep. So it's been super relaxing. And so it's also such a cool bond. That is something I will cherish for the rest of my life. And I, once Reagan stopped feeding, I was really sad because it was very unexpected and I wasn't gonna force it. And I didn't really get to like take in that last feed that I thought, oh, she'll never go back to it. Pretty much when Sawyer was born, she like picked it right back up. Actually, I was starting to like offer when she would start to throw tantrums because I had read somewhere online that it could be a good way to help her regulate her emotions and like calm down. It actually really was. So I wasn't trying to push it, but I also would just say like, if you want, if you're ever sad or want to you can always ask and I just kind of put it that way for her and she would so it really helped de-escalate a lot of tantrums but right after we brought Sawyer home from the hospital I let her know I'm gonna be feeding your baby brother and then if you would like some you can have some too so she took right up back to it and to the point that she's like wants it more than I'm willing to feed her so I think that's another thing with answering the how do you have time for it I just have to like set the expectation for her and like create some boundaries because I do have things to do besides feed them. So I think that it's just about communicating that with your child and it does make it easier when they're older, which is cool about feeding a toddler like this because you can communicate and you can say, hey, we can't do it now, but we can do it later. And you can really like figure that out together. Another benefit of feeding an older kid. Another thing that people ask me is like, how do you feed kids with teeth? It's funny because Reagan did go through like a very, very short period of biting right before her first birthday. And I honestly thought our journey was gonna be over. I was like, um, yeah, this ain't working for me and I don't wanna bleed. So let's just like not do this. So I actually talked to the lactation specialist then and was like, what do you do about this? Just said basically unlatch her and that's the end of that session right then and there. Don't shame her, don't discipline her, but just know it's a normal natural thing and they are just curious. They're getting teeth, they're not really trying to hurt you, they're just trying to explore with chewing and whatever. So it stopped luckily, hopefully it's the same with Sawyer, but um, honestly, once I got back to feeding her, I was a little nervous because she has a full mouth of teeth now. And I was able to say like, oh, you're hurting mommy. Can you um, let go? And then let's try again and don't use your teeth. And she, she gets it. She doesn't do that. And we are able to talk about it. So it's actually kind of cool. And so Sawyer, on the other hand, with his gums can bite me and it 
can be very painful. So I'm like, ooh, I wonder how this is gonna go because he's so close to popping a tooth. So we'll see, but it's really not bad. I think it's just like people, oh, there's not very many people I know that do this. I only know one person personally, and that's the lactation specialist. So it was kind of cool that we could connect on that. And she, it just made her even more invested in helping me. So if you have any questions about how this works, or like if you're interested, drop the comments down below and would love to answer them. As you can see, I'm pretty passionate about this and like breastfeeding in general, I love. So I think that there's so little support out there. And I think so many mamas out there would breastfeed or be successful with it if they had the right support. So if I can be that in any way, shape or form, I would love to. There's no weird questions, there's no stupid questions, and don't be afraid to reach out. So DM me, comment down below, but um, yeah, if you guys want to hear any more about my breastfeeding journey, let me know. I can always do another video, but I did want to at least get on here and post this because I think there are a lot of people who are curious and I get a lot of questions about my breastfeeding journey, especially when I was pregnant. So I did want to at least do a video to sum all of that up. I hope that this video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already because I'll be posting videos twice a month and I love to get your guys' feedback and see what you guys are looking for as far as content goes. All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.